Welcome to the Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner for this month. I'm going to tie a Chickaboo Damsel. This is a really pretty easy fly to tie and it introduces you to several uh, interesting techniques to create the eyes and also a rather interesting way of using Chickaboo, which is the chicken equivalent of Marabou. I'm also going to show you an interesting technique for putting dubbing on a fly and we're going to use this to um, tie in a collar on this damsel. So I hope you enjoy this pattern. Um, it's a great little pattern for uh, Crane Prairie during the summer damsel hatches and other lakes as well. So with this Chickaboo Damsel, we're trying to imitate the damsel fly nymph that lives in a lot of our Central Oregon area waters. And here's a couple of pictures to give you a perspective on the insect that we're uh, trying to tie. I like to fish the Chickaboo Damsel on a hover line out on some of the flats on Crane Prairie and some of the shallows in in close on some of our flats in other area lakes as well during June damselfly time. So let me cover the materials list for this pattern. I'm going to cover each individually so you get a better idea of why I selected each material for this pattern. For a hook, I'm going to use a fire hole 718 in size 14. This is a curved shank competition barbless hook that I like a lot for a pattern like the Chickaboo Damsel. I'm going to weight this pattern lightly, so I'm going to add a few wraps of .015 lead wire. For thread, I'm going to use Vivas 14 aught in olive. For the eyes, I'm going to make this out of amnesia and I'll use my lighter to sear the end of a small piece and create a bulbous orange eye for this damsel. For the tail and abdomen, I'm going to use whiting chickaboo. This is the chicken equivalent of marabou and I'm going to tie this on in a unique style. I'm going to rib the wrapped chickaboo with some copper wire to add a little strength and durability. For the collar, I'm going to use Fly Fish Foods Junior Bruiser Blend in a medium olive. So let's get started with this pattern. I've placed my hook in the vise and now I've cut off a piece of my amnesia that's probably oh inch and a quarter inch and a half long and I'm going to go ahead and take a lighter and burn the each of the ends holding in my uh, hackle pliers and just before it reaches the hackle plier I'll go ahead and blow out the flame and then we'll dip it in some water to cool it off before I tie it on the hook. So I'll start this pattern by tying on about six or eight wraps of my lead wire and I'll tie that on leaving a little gap at the, at the uh, right behind the eye of the hook. Um, that's where I'm going to put my eyes in a moment. And once I've wrapped that on the hook, I'll trim off the edges and then I'm going to tie on my thread. And I'll wrap that back to the wire, over the wire, and back to the back of that wire uh, with a number of wraps to secure it in place. So next, I'm going to tie in the uh, eyes that we just fashioned out of amnesia. And so I'll wrap these right behind the little nook created by the lead wire. And I'll wrap it with figure eight wraps over the uh, um, 
over the eyes until it's secured to the hook. Next, I've clipped off a, a few inches of my copper wire, and I'm going to tie that in right behind the lead on this, um, the abdomen of this fly. So now I've taken a chickaboo feather, and I've prepared it by stripping off all of the um, barbs off the stem, right about where that stem thickens up quite a bit. So I've collected all the tips of this chickaboo feather together and I'm going to tie it on right at the tail set position with several wraps of thread. So I'll go ahead and advance my thread all the way up to the head of this fly. And then I'm going to take my hackle pliers and attach it to the stem of the uh, chickaboo. And I'm going to rotate it or spin it around in with my hackle pliers to create a rope which is going to be spun onto the abdomen of this fly all the way up to the head and around the eyes to create the, um, the body of this pattern. and I'll clip off the excess and I might do a little bit of pruning here if I've got any stray fibers or anything that looks kind of out of out of place um, I might prune off some of the longer ends as well so now I'll take my copper wire and I'll rib this all the way back up or I'll counter rib it back up to the uh, head of the hook and tie that off and clip off the excess So the last step on this fly is to take my bruiser blend dubbing and I'm going to preen this together just to kind of even up the tips of the dubbing and then I'm going to place some a little bit above the eyes and a little bit below the eyes and wind that in place um, with several consecutive loops over the top of it and ultimately will wind some into the uh, uh, ahead of the eye to create the head on this fly and then I'll whip finish and finalize the pattern. So I can take my fingers and kind of work and stroke this material back to lay nicely, um, kind of in a flowing fashion toward the back of this pattern. Uh, that's what allows it to um, move and flex in the water to imitate the natural damsel. So let me rotate this around in my vise so you get a sense of what the overall pattern uh, looks like. When this pattern is fished in the water and gets wet, that uh, profile that you see in the picture becomes very slim and trim, much like the natural. It's an excellent imitation. So that has been your Sun River Anglers fly tying corner for this month. I hope you have enjoyed the Chickaboo Damsel and, uh, and we'll give this pattern a try. It's a really good one for Crane Prairie come damsel time. 
If you like what you see, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and visit us on Facebook at Sun River Anglers. Thanks for watching.